let us uh, explore faith and action or faith in action as we celebrate today the Trinity Sunday and honor Africans on Africa Day celebrated yesterday but we're doing it today in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit be seated of course today is uh, Trinity Sunday and Christians worldwide reflect on the profound mystery of the triune God Father Son and Holy Spirit whose unity and diversity underpin the Christian faith the doctrine of the Trinity central to Christian theology speaks of a God who exists in three persons yet in one essence this theological truth finds expression in the gospel of john where jesus elucidates the roles of the father son and holy spirit in the salvation of humanity through john 3 1 17 that was read we witness the Father's love, the Son's sacrificial mission, and the Holy Spirit's transformative power, eight indispensable to the divine plan of redemption. Drawing from the Old Testament, particularly Isaiah 6, 1 to 8, we discern hints of the triune nature of God, echoing the Trinitarian themes found in John's Gospel. Isaiah's vision of God enthroned, surrounded by Sheraphim, proclaiming His holiness. And we sing the first song, Holy, Holy, Holy. Suggests a plurality within the Godhead. This plurality resonates with Jesus' assertion of his pre-existence in John's Gospel, affirming the interconnectedness of Old and New Testament revelations of God. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he amplifies the transformative impact of belief in the triune God. Paul expounds on the privileges of sonship conferred upon believers by the Father the co-heirship with Christ and the Spirit's assurance of their identity. This divine adoption engenders a radical shift in believers' lives, empowering them to live in accordance with their new nature and to endure suffering with the hope of future glory. After finishing my first borrowed book at the Württembergische Landis Bibliothek, thanks to Howard for enrolling me there, The White Knights of the Black Orchestra by Tom Donkel, I was struck by the portrayal of Pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who led the Confessing Church that emerged as a protestant resistant movement within Nazi Germany, boldly affirming Christian principles over Nazi ideology. Bonhoeffer's courageous stance and the concept of costly grace particularly caught my attention, prompting a desire to delve deeper into his story. I will borrow another book about him. Bonhoeffer's concept of costly grace, deeply rooted in the Trinity, particularly aligns with Romans 8, 12 to 17. This grace demands a transformative response, echoing the sacrificial love demonstrated by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father's profound love is epitomized in the costly gift of Jesus Christ, whose sacrificial death 
embodies the essence of costly grace. In Romans 8.15, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but we have received a spirit of adoption when we, when you cry, Abba, Father. Emphasizes believers' intimate adoption into God's family through the Spirit, prompting a life led by the Spirit rather than the flesh. The Holy Spirit plays a crucial role in enabling believers to live out this costly grace, empowering them to reflect their new identity in Christ by putting to death the misdeeds of the body. This connection underscores the costly grace intertwines believers' lives deeply with the triune God, embracing the love of the Father, following the re redemptive path of the Son, and being empowered by the Holy Spirit. It calls for genuine discipleship, marked by sacrifice and transformation, echoing Bonhoeffer's live vision of a faith that truly costs something, yet offers profound spiritual rewards in alignment with the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Today, we also celebrate Africa Day, a moment to honor the continent's rich tapestry of cultures, struggles against colonialism, and triumphs. In this intersection of faith and commemoration, faith the triumph God, we find a compelling narrative of belief in action intertwined echoing across continents, not only Africa, and generations. Africa Day, celebrated annually on May 25th, marks the founding of the Organization of African Unity, now the African Union, in 1963. It symbolizes Africa's collective struggle against colonialism, apartheid, and oppression representing unity, independence, and the pursuit of freedom, justice, and development. The United Kingdom, Germany, and United States were colonial powers of or in Africa, with the UK having the largest empire until the mid-20th century. Germany, holding colonies until after World War I. And the USA, though not physically, exerting influence through trade and missionary activities, shaping Africa's history, societies, economies, and politics. As we reflect on Trinity Sunday today and Africa, we cannot overlook the shared challenges facing the continent. Africa grapples with poverty, conflict, political instability, and environmental degradation, compelling many to seek better opportunities elsewhere, including Germany. However, however, amidst these adversities, Christians in Africa are beacons of hope, actively engaged in addressing societal injustices and elevating human suffering. And I'm forced to mention, or I love to mention, some figures. One is Archbishop Bismond Tutu, who worked beyond South Africa, influencing the struggle for justice and reconciliation across the African continent. And today, during our discussion, we learned, I am because we are, Ubuntu, uh, from South Africa, but it influenced the continent. 
Of course, there's Nelson Mandela, a revered South African apartheid, anti-apartheid revolutionary and political leader. We have Father Michael Lapsley, and I met him in person last year in uh, Freiburg during the International Racial Justice Conference. A priest and social justice activist known for his advocacy against apartheid. We have Bishop Abel Mozoriwa, a Zimbabwean Methodist bishop and politician who played a significant role in the country's struggle for independence from colonial rule. We have Archbishop Benjamin Nwankiti. I hope I pronounce it correct. Nwankiti. Nwankiti. Okay, thank you. A Nigerian Anglican bishop and social activist who campaigned against corruption, poverty, and injustice in Nigeria and known for his outspokenness on political and social issues, advocating for the rights of the poor and marginalized. And we have another Archbishop, Jan Kofi Amisa in Ghana, who played a significant role in advocating for social justice, human rights, and national liberation. These individuals exemplify the transformative potential of faith-driven activism and costly grace through their sacrificial actions and wavering commitment to justice and willingness to endure personal hardships for the sake of others. I am because we are Ubuntu. Their courageous advocacy against oppression, injustice, and inequality reflects a deep understanding of the costliness of grace and the call to follow Christ's example of selfless love and service. Like Bonhoeffer, they demonstrate that true discipleship involves a radical commitment to living out the principles of justice, reconciliation, and human dignity, even at the great personal cost. Today, Trinity Sunday and Africa Day, we are reminded of the inseparable band between faith and action. The triune God, whose love encompasses the world, calls us to emulate His compassion and justice in our interactions with others. And I will repeat, and I love the word, Ubuntu. I am because we are. Amen. 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 Amen.